live. So uh, this is my first live video that I've ever done on a uh, on YouTube, and I'm going to do a live unboxing video. And for those who don't know, my name is Charles Moffat. I'm a Canadian fantasy writer, and I live here in Toronto, and I have a lot of fantasy books, including books that I've had since I was like four or five years old. So recently I went up to visit my parents' place, and I picked up a bunch of fantasy books there uh, that were stored in my parents' attic, and I decided to bring them back. So amongst the books that I found were, of course, some of my uh, old uh, He-Man, he Masters of the Universe type books that I've had since I was like roughly four or five years old. And uh, I have, let's see, at least two or three of these ones from this series as far as that goes. But there's other ones that I have too that I've shown in other videos. Uh, but yeah, so this is... This kind of tells you why I became a fantasy author in the first place is because of uh, He-Man. He-Man and that old uh, Hercules TV show that, you know, that was like black and white back in the 80s uh, that, that uh, it was made in earlier. Uh, Astro Boy, that was another favorite of mine when I was growing up. Um, the the A-Team with Mr. T, that was one of my favorites from that time. So I I very much was attracted to this uh, this idea of the, the big, strong hero uh, yes. concept. And I, you know, so He-Man would be one of those primary characters. And then as I got older, I got into characters like Conan the Barbarian and so forth. And then in my own writing, I have characters like Rathgar and Wolfric, which are themselves influenced by characters like Beowulf and um other characters like that oh it looks like my son is coming down the stairs he's gonna interrupt a live video hi richard hi richard how you doing you bringing daddy some ice cream the joys of live video people my son is bringing me ice cream okay so yes uh let's continue with this i, I supposed to be opening uh these books from my parents place up north and so forth. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of these books that I have here. I got two boxes full of them. So this should be a fairly long video. Pardon? I would like chocolate ice cream with chocolate sprinkles. Can you get them for daddy? Okay. Thank you, Richard. Okay. So Master of the Universe, The Thief of Castle Grayskull. So that's the first book that we're going to unbox here. And now there are some books in here, obviously, that are not fantasy books. For example, there's the Berenstein Bears and Week at Grandma's. So I brought some of these books I brought back from my son. And then, of course, I have some Dungeons and Dragons books. So here's the Monsters Compendium Annual, which basically is just a series of uh, monsters and whatnot that appeared in Dragon Magazine uh, back in the 1980s, roughly. Uh, so that's the first yeah. one. Yeah. I bought this years ago in Toronto at the bookstore Harry Tarantula, apparently. So that's something else there. And what else we have? Now, I did mention that there are some books here that are not fantasy. For example, Lassie. There's a bunch of Lassie books here that I got, got for uh, my son so he can uh, I can read them to him because he likes Lassie and I like Lassie. And some other books that are similar in concept. So that's more for my son, Treasure Island. Tom Swift, and the Diving Sea Copter. Yeah, okay. And Wizard of Id. Richard, that's too loud, buddy. Okay, Wizard of Id is one of these classic uh, um, comic strips that I really enjoyed. That has a like it has a fantasy theme. Hi, Richard. Oh, you got me the ice cream. Thank you, buddy. You should go get mommy some ice cream. I know, gave nom, 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 nom. Thank you. You already gave mommy and grandma ice cream? Yeah. Well, but Arthur, he likes ice cream too. Um, he doesn't be. He's just a baby. He can't have ice cream? Okay. So what else we got in here? Well, more Lassie books. There you go. It was three Lassie books. Lots of Lassie books to read to Richard. And then this one has children's stories, but it also has some... Uh, Lassie books in it? Uh, sorry, not Lassie. Terhoon. Terhoon was a different author who wrote uh, similar books to Lassie. All right, so this is David Edding's uh, book. It's uh, book three of the Tamuli, which is The Hidden City, which is the final book in that series. What? Richard, we're not watching Lassie right now. Can you take your toys upstairs, please? Daddy's trying to do a video. Pretty please? Okay. Okay. 
You're very cute. So that's my son who does modeling, if you can believe it. Okay, so uh, the Hidden City. Yes, I remember reading this back in the 1990s. I don't think I will ever read any books by David Eddings ever again, or his wife. Um, I will probably sell this book. I'm not planning to ever read these books ever again. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because uh, David Eddings was a child abuser. So, yeah. Like, they didn't find out until after he died, apparently. Like, most people didn't know. Uh, only, like, friends and family apparently knew that he and his wife were both child abusers. And that's why I will never read any of the books ever again. Now, Dave Duncan, on another hand, I will read his books uh, again. In fact, I bought uh, one of his books recently um, uh, called The Death of Nanji. So I'm planning to read that one sometime uh, So, because I haven't read it yet. But this one I have read. It was particularly good. So it's this is part of a series of books. Shoot, what's it called? I just set me up. Uh, a handful of men. So there's a there's another series called A Man of His Word, and then there's this this the sequel series. So there's the first series, A Man of His Word, and then the second series is called A Handful of Men by Dave Duncan. And it's they're they're quite good books, in my opinion. And he's a very good author. I really much I very much enjoy Dave Duncan's work. Definitely something worth reading. Let's see what I have in here next. Okay, Troy Denning. The Obsidian Oracle. So this is the Dark Sun series of books uh, published by TSR back in the 80s and 90s and so forth. Um, this one... Yeah. This one has... like This is one of these books that has an ending that you're kind of like... Ugh. Okay, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but uh, it is an enjoyable series of books. You just... Uh, I didn't like the ending too much of that one. Uh, personal preference, just me. Anyway, Azura Bonds, that's from Forgotten Realms, also published by CTSR. Uh, this one, I think they might have dictated what her armor should look like to the authors. And the authors were like, okay, fine. Uh, we'll make her armor do this. And I think it was a little ridiculous that they, they felt that like this is what the armor should look like. Um, I don't know if that's actually the case. That's my theory. But I think it's like the you know the art was was already made and they like refused to change it so they had to change the story to say that her armor looked like that. It's just it's, I don't know. Anyway, I don't like that that particular series. Like this series, uh, Azure Bonds, which is book one of the Finder Stone series. There's certain aspects of that series that I found enjoyable, and the other aspects I just thought was ridiculous. Like the whole thing with the Saurians, Saurials, whatever they're called. Like they're like, like basically it's a dinosaur people. I don't like sorials. I th I think they're just childish and just kind of silly. It's like yeah yeah let's have dinosaur people in the books. Okay, let's just toss those over there because this is gonna be a really big pile by the way. Uh, here's another Dave Duncan book. I'm gonna move all the lassie books and whatnot over there, and I'm crushing these or other books here. Okay, so. If you're going to read any book from Dave Duncan, I would definitely recommend, well, sorry, any series by Dave Duncan, definitely read The uh, uh, the Seventh Sword series. So it's, it's three books as far as like a trilogy goes and, you know, books one, two, three, and so forth. Uh, and this is, I believe, the third book. And then the fourth book is the one I mentioned earlier, which is The Death of Nanji. And that one is actually quite good as well. Sorry, I'm guessing it's going to be quite good. I'm guessing. I haven't read it yet. But I'm guessing it's going to be quite good. Uh, because it will be the same the same main character, but he'll, he'll be older uh, significantly. Because there's a big gap in years between when these ones were written and when the death of Nanji was written. And I think it's because the author decided, they, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the ending a bit by adding a fourth book to the series. All right, let's see what we got here. So this is the first one from that series, The Reluctant Swordsman. Uh, where he finds the magic sword and everything. Uh, as that's not a spoiler. It's on the book cover. I was talking to one of my fans earlier today about like it's not it's not really a spoiler if it's on the book cover because we were talking about the name of a dragon that's in uh, Corovia, and 
it's it's not a spoiler. It's on my website and the book cover. You know, it's just like so the the dragon's right there on the book cover. And here's the second book in the series, The Coming of Wisdom. So there's books one, two, and three. I might read these again someday, but I personally thought that these are some of Dave Duncan's best work. Uh, he has a very different way of doing magic and so forth within uh, his worlds. Um, so in this case, you know, he's got the sword and all that stuff going on for them. Um, and I should say that the sword's not actually magical. You kind of treat it like it's a magic sword because, you know, this god-like thing here, you know, gives it to him. So it's kind of like a godly made sword in the first place. So it's a nice sword. I'm not sure if it's actually magical, though. Um, and then the magic that works in, like, this series of books with uh, a man of his word and a handful of men, it's based on word magic. And... Only certain people actually know these magic words. And the magic words themselves are apparently the names of fairies that have died. And then the name of the fairy has life of itself in some ways. So it's it's this abstract thing. And if you know a word of power, one of the words of the you know fairy names, uh, it grants you certain abilities. So if you know one word of power, uh, it makes you really good at one thing. Okay, so if you're good with horses... You become really good at like, you know, taking care of horses, riding horses, doing anything that involves horses. You just get really good at that. If you know two words of power, you are good at everything. Okay. Fighting, swimming, jumping, whatever you want to do, you're basically good at it. Three words of power allow you to do magic. Okay. But it's temporary magic. You have to concentrate on it. So you can do illusions. You can do, you can go from place to place a little, you know, like temper, you know, like fairly quickly. Um, but there's, there's limitations on it. So you can only do certain types of magic. And then if you know four words of power, then you can do sorcery, which is permanent and instantaneous. Like you don't even have to concentrate on it anymore. It's just immediate. And then if you know five words of power, you explode. Uh, but if you have five words of power that you share between two people, so two people who love each other, with five words, together they become a god. Okay, and that's why this book is called The Living God. Okay, so it basically comes back to this idea that you have to have five words of power plus love to become a god. And there are many gods in this world as far as that goes, but you need those five words of power to become a god. Um, now, let's keep going. There is more books in here to... I gotta fall off the sofa. Okay, the Cutting Edge. That's another of the uh, handful of men, uh, handful of men series. That's the first book in the series. And what else we got? Uh, so this is the earlier series, A Man of His Word. So that's book four of the series, Emperor and Clown. Which is, and it's there are some funny bits in these books, but this is not, I would not say that this is a comedic fantasy. This is definitely not a comedic fantasy. It's definitely more serious, but there are still some funny bits that happen sometimes in these books. And frankly, if you're going to read something, I might as well have some fa funny stuff. So fairy lands forlorn. So that refers to the actual place where fairies live and come from and so forth. And some of them get killed, obviously, because... They don't become words of power unless they actually get killed. Perilous Seas. Uh, so that's book three of Man of His Word. And what else do we have in here? Um, Stricken Field. That's book three of A Handful of Men. Okay, so more books by the same author. And Upland Outlaws. And it's got yeah, all sorts of stuff, great stuff in here. Okay, now... What else we got? Well, finally, a different author. This is Christopher Stasheff. And he wrote the Warlock series of books back in the 1960s and 70s. And 80s. I got a toddler upstairs yelling my name. I don't know what he wants. Um, but yeah, so this is one of the later books in the series. Um, I didn't buy this book myself. I got this one from my cousin Ken who, uh, sh shall we say, bequeathed a whole bunch of books 
when they moved one time and a whole bunch of books basically got stuck in boxes and then sent to my parents' place. And so I remember reading that book when I was a teenager. Oh yeah, what else we got in here? Okay, more Forgotten Realms books. So we have the Avatar Trilogy. This is book two, Tantras. Each each book in the uh, av the Avatar Trilogy is the name of a city. So Tantras is one of the cities, as far as that series of books goes. And then uh, Waterdeep, and then there's another one. Um, Shadowdale or something like that? I can't remember. I'm sure we're about to find out. But the Avatar series was one of those books that, uh, like, series that uh, a lot of things were happening that are important for the Forgotten Realms at that time because they basically said, hey, we're going to change a whole bunch of stuff from um, uh, Ed Greenwood's original design of the Forgotten Realms world, which he sold to TSR. And they decided that they wanted to change a bunch of things, and so they went ahead and did, the, did that. But in order to make the changes, they had to explain it somehow in the books. So Tantras and the other books in the Avatar series basically go through that whole process. Realms of Magic is a anthology series of short stories, dealing, you know, dealing specifically with you know stories involving magic, so wizardry and so forth. So on the cover here, they got. Um, Kelbrin, Kelbin, uh, Blackstaff, and then El Elminster, and that must be Volo, who's a bit more of a a rogue of sorts and a traveler. He's not so much good at magic as the other two are. Uh, but Elminster's like, in D and D terms, Dungeons and Dragons terms, like Elminster's like a thirtieth or fortieth level wizard, um, and has various other magical abilities as well. He also has like spell slaying. So no, not spell slaying. Spell fire. He has the spell fire ability, apparently. So the Women's Spur is another one of the Finder Stone trilogy. That's book two. And what else we got in here? So you can this is this is you can have to get a feel of uh the type of books that I was reading back in uh the 1990s. Now here's the thing. This one's Shadows of Doom, which is written by Ed Greenwood himself, who created the Forgotten Realms. I never actually read this book. I have the book. Uh, I never actually read it. I bought it and I just never got around to reading it. Um, and like, you know, it's got damage on there and whatnot, but you know what? Oh, maybe I read the first part. I read the first chapter by the looks of it and I stuck a card in there. I must have got bored or something and then start reading a different book. Okay, Waterdeep. That is book three of the series. So, and then two characters on the cover. Uh, specifically, those two characters are Midnight, okay, and uh, Kelimvor, I think is his name, Kelimvor. So there's Kelimvor and Midnight are on the cover, as far as the characters go. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. <sighs> Song of the Sorials, that is book three of the Fighter Stone trilogy. So, you know, more dinosaur people. Um... And this, like, really powerful bard who's, like, barely even appears in the first book. Or maybe he appears in the second book. I can't remember. Hello. All right. And Realms of Underdog. So this is another one of these uh, anthology series books. Who is, you know, deals with stories similar to Dritz to Erden and so forth. And... Um... Not necessarily just George Sheridan. There's other characters, obviously. Uh, but I'm sure they stuck at least one George Sheridan story in here. Let's see at the start. What, who, who, what's actually listed in here? Uh, there's the preface. Mark Anthony, Ed Greenwood, Elaine Cunningham also did a series of books that involving a, a Drow character. Sea of Ghosts by Roger E. Moore. Not to confuse Roger Moore from the uh, James Bond series. Roger E. Moore had to basically... He started to stick the E in the middle to avoid being confused with James Bond actor. Anyway, um, Brian M. Thompson. Oh, there is nothing in here by R.A. Salvatore. That's actually kind of like an oversight. It's like... Oh, and then... No, they do actually have something in here. It includes a preview excerpt from Passage to Dawn by R.A. Salvatore. Okay, so there is a tiny bit in there, but it's not a short story. It's a excerpt. And speaking of R.A. Salvatore, here is Canticle, 
book one of the Cleric Quintet by Ari Salvatore. So that's obviously this is the evil wizard. So not the evil wizard, the evil cleric. And that's the good cleric, of course. Just that's not a spoiler. That's the cover. It's right there on the cover. Okay. So we have, um, if you want to read this, let's just put that in there. High in the placid snowflake mountains lies a little known conservatory for bards, priests, clerics, and others. Cloistered up among his colleagues, a scholarly priest, sorry, a scholar priest named Catterley must contain a malevolent consuming essence that's been uncorked before his own brethren turn against him. Okay. Catterley must put his studies to the test and enter the catacombs far below to save his brothers and himself. So none of that's a spoiler. That's a, uh, it's on the cover, the back cover. So uh, this series of books, there's like five of them, and you're going to see a little more of them in a second, uh, is actually quite good. I I would say I, I very much enjoyed these books. The only problem I have with them is how quickly this character uh, gets more powerful. Like, he gets very powerful very quickly. Okay, so this is another anthology book. Obviously, this one has Dritz to Erden in it and Elminster, and that is uh, one of Lane Cunningham's characters as well that is on there. Apparently, she didn't get top billing for the back cover for the names of the authors, um, but they put their character on the cover. I don't know why she, she didn't get top billing. Okay, let's see. What do we got next here? Okay, so book three of the Cleric Contet. The, um, sorry, Night Masks. And if you're hearing people in the background, that's my wife moving around and my toddler coming to... Yeah. Okay. So, uh, book four is The Fallen Fortress, which has a furbolg and some dwarves in it. So, more stuff happening there. And... Book five, The Chaos Curse. Obviously, that guy's the evil guy. You can kind of tell just looking at him. And what else we got? <sighs> Thornhold by Elaine Cunningham. Who else would be on there? Yeah, of course. This is a different character. Bronwyn. Yeah, so that's not the character that we were talking about earlier. That uh, This one, this is the, um, Elf the character from Elf Shadow and other books. Yeah. So, hi, Richard. Okay, that box is now empty. So, next box. Hey, Richard, can you go upstairs? Daddy's making a video. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Daddy will take you for a walk. Do you want to go for a walk? Okay, Daddy's going to take you for a walk later. We'll go shoot stuff with your slingshot, okay? Is that okay? Play something. Just play we'll go stuff. shoot so some rocks with your slingshot, okay? Won't play that be Okay, we will bring some things with us. And, well, well, we'll take the slingshot to the beach another time. For those who don't know, slingshots are awesome at the beach because there's lots of pebbles. Okay, I gotta keep going here. Richard, Daddy's doing something. Can you go go away upstairs for now? Hey, please. No. No. Yeah. Daddy's in a video and it's live. <laughs> Richard. Okay, I'm just going to tickle you. No. I'm going to tickle you so much. Yes. No, tickle, 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 tickle. No, no. I didn't even have to really tickle him. It's just the threat of tickles. Okay, so this book is called Tigana or Tigana. It depends who you talk to. They might pronounce it differently. Tigana. So it's kind of like, like a historical version of, like a historical fantasy kind of of Italy, but it's a different name. Okay? I think it was Italy. It wasn't Spain. I'm pretty sure it was Italy. Anyway, I read this book back in the 90s. 1990s. And there's certain parts of this book I like. And there's certain parts that I hate. There's a picture of Tigana on it. So, so yeah, it's, it's basically sort of like a map of Italy, but upside down. Um, yeah, they just did it, designed it differently. So, um, so Guy Gabriel K has a number of these, uh, I'm going to call them literary fantasies. 
that are set in uh, alternate worlds, you know, like alternate fantasy worlds, but they're themed based on like specific countries like Italy or Spain or um, the uh, Byzantine Empire, things like that. And this one in particular is basically based off of Italy. Uh, but I don't like Give Give Rule K anymore. Uh, he may be a good author. He may be good at writing books. And there's certain things I like about this book and certain things I don't like. Uh, but I don't read his books anymore. Um, I ha don't like his writing anymore. That's just that's just me. So I'm actually going to sell that book. Um, now, this one I've never read. But it was amongst the books that I decided to pick up while I was at my parents' place. And I said, hey, maybe I'll read it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I don't know. I don't know what really that's about. Aside from like the back cover. And I kind of said, OK, Camino Pass sounds like it's magic or maybe psychic powers. I don't know what's going on there. But I'm guessing this is science fantasy. That's what I'm guessing. And I've been meeting. Sorry, I've been reading more science fantasy in recent years. Um, so things like. Um, Dune, for example, is science fantasy because it's essentially it's a fantasy story with, you know, uh, the spice abilities or essentially just, you know, it's just magic that you're using the spice to explain where the magic comes from. Um, and then the, the worms of Dune are basically dragons. They're just worm shaped. And so it is essentially a fantasy. And you got, you know, kings and queens and, you know, courtly um drama going on and betrayal and so forth and uh predestiny and fate and all a bunch of other stuff going on anyway so this is another david eddings book uh the ruby knight um honestly if you're reading the, the series books uh, you could start with this book and cl completely skip book one you don't need to read book one at all you could just go straight to book two and then just continue on from there you don't need to read book one at all uh, but you could if you wanted to, I suppose. Um, but again, here's the thing. I don't want to read David Eddings ever again. I kind of don't like his work anymore. And part of that is also the way he writes. He's one of these authors who writes in present tense. And I don't really like present tense anymore. So, like, there's the fact that he's, like, a child abuser. But there's also the fact that he writes in present tense. And I just, there's various authors I just... I can't stand that they're writing in present tense. It's like, why did you have to ruin this book by making it in present tense? Let's see what we have here. So this is The Sunset Warrior, which I've never read. But it looks cool. I've heard of the author, which is uh, Eric Van Lustbader, which I think is a fake name. I'm pretty sure that's a fake name. Uh, but interesting cover. In, you know, The Sunset Warrior uh, has an interesting name as well. So I'm curious to like what is but this looks like it's also science fantasy. So similar to that uh, Warlock on Sun, this is also science fantasy because this this is a robot horse walking around here, okay? And uh, the sun is actually the son of a basically like an astronaut slash explorer. The warlock, they call him the warlock, but he's really just like an astronaut that like landed on this planet um, and brought his like robot horse along. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see else, what else we got here. Hierarchies. Never read this one either. This is another one of my cousin's books that were gifted to us. And Dare. Never read that one either. So another book, one of the books that I'm going to see if it's any good. Based from like the things that we've given by my cousin. So Love and War. That is a anthology book uh, set in Dragonlance. Uh, volume three, you'll notice. So there's like also volumes one and two, which I'm probably going to get into in there. Uh, but each volume of these uh, this series of books had uh, a different theme. So this one is love and war, obviously. So this character is Raceland here, and this is some girl that uh, apparently she's a uh, she was it called um, Urdu Urdu something like that. I can't remember. She's not human. She's Urdu or whatever it's called. Urda. Urda, I think that's what it's called. Um, but they're not human. They're actually more like ogres. 
She does not look like an ogre, but yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, let's just fix the. I don't think this is. There we go. That looks better. All right. Now, also from the Tale series is the Kender Dw Gully Dwarfs Gnomes book, volume two. So that's from the same series of short stories. It's just this one focuses on specifically Kender Gully Dwarfs Gnomes, obviously. So, and what else we got in here? Well, here we go. We got another Dark Sun book. This one is the Cerulean Storm. Now, this is another one of these. Technically, all these Dark Sun books that I have, they all came from my cousin Ken. So, but I did actually read these ones, unlike some of the other ones. Um, same with a bunch of the other Forgotten Realms books. Those also came from my cousin. All right, so the Amber Enchantress also came from my cousin. Um, and another one of these Dark Sun books. This one is actually quite good. I enjoy the ending of that one. Okay, Shadow Dale. There's the the first one from the Avatar trilogy. So there's Kelimvor, Midnight, and various other characters. Um, yeah. It's just, I'm trying to remember their names right now. Let's see. Did they actually mention the names in the back? Uh, I don't see the names mentioned. Anyway, if you're going to read that series, read this one first. Kind of, you'll kind of be confused if you don't read them in order for the particular series. Okay, so here we have another Gigre Volcay book, The Lions of Al Rasan. Now, this one is based more on the historical um, Spain. Okay, so it's basically about the like the Muslim conquest of Spain and so forth, going you know back and forth in terms of like different armies fighting over Spain. Uh, to see who basically gets control of the peninsula. And there should be a map here in the front. So let's see if we can find the map real quick. I said real quick, but it's, uh, oh my gosh, acknowledgements. Oh, principal character. Oh, here we go. Now, if that doesn't look like Spain, I don't know what does. Uh, so yeah, he's basically, and he's even called it Esperana is is the the name. So it's yeah, it's basically Esperana up here and Al Rasan down here. So it's it's that's the Muslim controlled area, and this is the non-Muslim, the Christian controlled area, effectively. And then you know this is basically his different version in this series of books. This is his different version of uh, that area, as far as that goes. And there's other sections here that are outlined in different books. Because, like, with the case of Tagana, he had that one as a standalone, where he, you know, it was just that one world. But with this series of books, he decided to have them all set in the. So, this book and similar books that go along with this one, uh, they do actually take place in the same map as far as the world goes, although at different time points. Yeah. Whereas this one, Tagana, he doesn't do that. It's just completely separate with a different magic system. And I think that maybe that's wise because of the magic system. So, Crown of Fire. So this is another Forgotten Realms books, but this is the sequel to Spellfire. Uh, so this is by Ed Greenwood. And this kind of goes through that whole process of uh, this Spellfire series of books. So the Spellfire originally was like a standalone book, and then they came up with a sequel, and I think they came up with a third one that has like a Dracolich in it, which is like a undead dragon. Or maybe the first book had the Dracolich in it. Sorry, never mind. Yeah, there you go. Spellfire. It's got a Dracolich in it. Uh, I think that, but I think there were more Dracoliches in other books as well. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've read those. I haven't read those books in over 20 years. So, and there, it's kind of a case with when you read some of these books, you don't read them over again. Because uh, you're just like, okay, I've read it once. I don't need to read it again. This is one I'd be tempted to read again, though. Uh, Kaganeski. This is the Lost Histories of the Elves and so forth. Uh, as far as this one goes. So the Kaganeski was quite interesting because it's... Uh, they call them wild elves, but it's really more like they're wood elves. So the uh, other elves basically uh, in different time points, as far as Dragonlance goes, uh, refer to them by different names. But the Kaganesti were effectively, I would say, nomadic wood elves. And they were just uh, treated differently by various other elves. Uh, who considered them to be wild in comparison just because they were nomadic. Alright, let's see. We're just, I'm just going to grab three at a time here. 
So this is The Legend of Huma, which was by Richard Hagnack, which is uh, quite a good author. I, you may recall if you saw one of my other videos uh, recently that I I ha bought a bunch of Richard A. Knack books, and I'm planning to read them sometime, that are independent from Dragonlance, but similar. So I'm curious to read those sometime and see just how similar they are to Dragonlance, seen as by the um, the author is very, you know, Richard A. Knack, of course. And then also the artwork is done by various authors that also lended their skills to Dragonlance series. All right, so what do we got next? Oh, look, it's a second copy of Kender, Golly, Dwarves, and Dwarf Gnomes. You can guarantee I'm going to be selling at least one of these. Uh, because I got, like, two copies one year, for, I think, for Christmas. That's what happened. So, The Dragons of Kryn. This is another one of, any of these anthology books. Specifically, this one deals with dragons, of course. So, so each story is a dragon story set within Dragonlance. That's the beauty of a shared world. You can have lots of different authors uh, contributing. Okay, we got more David Anning's books here. Okay, we got a giant pile of books. I need to move some more out of the way. Okay. Just get, get those over there. Ah, my leg is getting crushed. All right. So, David Anning's. This is Sierra Sakel. This is book five. I think it's the final book in that series of the Malororian books. Um... A, David Eddings really liked his knights. Like all his books, basically have knights in them. He's he doesn't seem to do anything else. It's everything else has knights in them. Anyway, so and then he also likes having like different types of magic as well. Okay, so the Cirrus of Cal. So that's a reference to this. This is the Sapphire Rose, which is book three of the Elenium, which is another series. So he's just it's just referencing that that was a bestseller, and then. Yeah, book three of the Elenium. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's the that's that uh, one series of books with uh, the Sparhawk character. Sparhawk is a little... One of these characters who I would argue are, is actually too powerful. Um, he's just got... He's, like, too good in combat, and he knows magic, and all this other stuff at the same time. It's just... A, it's overkill. He's too powerful. All right, so Darkwell. This is book three of the Moonshade trilogy. I would like to read these books over again, uh, the Moonshade trilogy, as far as that goes. Uh, so this is one of these books that I will not be selling, and I will actually planning to read this one over again. I want to read the whole series over again. Okay, The Ring of Winter. I would not read this one over again. Um, it was it was good. Um, I'm not really into the dinosaurs. I think that's really the issue for me. I don't find dinosaurs as interesting as they, maybe I used to when I was five years old. And even when I was a teenager, I was like, meh, dinosaurs, whatever. So it's it's not something I really want to read that often. Now, here's one I would like to read. I haven't read this one yet, but, but it is by Dave Duncan, and you know that I like him. This is a standalone book called The Rose Red City. And apparently it's got a minotaur in it, and I like minotaurs, so I should read this sometime. Uh, definitely on my thing, my list of books to read. So I will not be selling this one, at least not right away. And I would like to read that one. So, let's see what else we got in here. Let's grab another three. Okay, now I mentioned earlier Elf Shadow, which is this uh, uh, book by Elaine Kenyon with that character there. And then of course there's the uh, Dandy Elf. Sorry, not Dandy. Uh, sorry, not... He, she's the Elf. Um... This dandy bard character who like basically comp you know you know accompanies her as far as it goes and she's got this uh sword here that's a magical elf sword uh that has all these extra runes on it that provide powers anyway this isn't really a uh spoiler uh it's on the back cover and you know you figure this out within the first two chapters it's not a spoiler uh but, yeah, stuff is going on there with her shadow, as far as that goes. And then Elf Song, uh, she basically wrote this as a sequel, but it doesn't actually have the character Erolyn in it. It focuses on this guy instead. So it's about the bard, which I really don't kind of, you know, I, I would have liked it to have Erolyn in it. That would have been interesting, but whatever. So... It was a decent book. I would not read it over again, though. Uh, not one of the ones I would read over again. 
So this is the fifth annual edition, the year's best science fiction and fantasy, apparently. Uh, includes various things by Ray Bradbury and other authors. What year was this printed? I don't know. But if it's like the best fantasy stories from that year, from like some specific, let's see, 1960. Yeah, this is one of these books that came up from my cousin. <laughs> All right. Uh, if they were the best, I assume that they're good, right? Uh, Siege of Darkness, that's an R.A. Self of a Tor book. So a lot of these books aren't even, like, it's a series of books as far as it goes, but they never really gave it a name. It was, like, more like that Dark Elf series, but uh, they never really called it that. It's a series of books with Dritz Durden and his friends in it. And if you haven't read them, then yeah, you probably should. Although, again, Dritz Durden is one of these characters who are is a little bit too powerful. Uh, he's, he's just, you know, he's, he's too much, he, he's a very good warrior, obviously, and he has a little bit of magic, not a lot of magic, unlike, say, Sparhawk in this series, but, yeah, who would win a fight between Dirtz de Erden or Sparhawk? I think Sparhawk, because he probably has the better magic, he's got more magic, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Dritz, you'd lose in a fight, but, hey, at least this one isn't, like, um, uh, a Gary Sue as much as he is, okay? He, he's less of a Gary Sue. Okay, so, Were Beasts of Hell. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> these are one of my cousin's books. I've never read it, and I, I picked it up, and I said, you know what, I will read it, and we'll see what happens. Oh, it's called Blood Song in the Back. Blood Song and Justice. That's interesting, because as you may know, I did a book review a while back about a book called Blood Song. Yes, Blood Song. Um, by shoot, what's his name? Um, Anthony Ryan. Yes, Anthony Ryan wrote a book called Blood Song. Two words, not one. This one's listed as two as one word. Anyway, so I will read this at some point. The Reign of Istar. So this is another one of these Tales trilogy books. So book one. So this is all stories set within a certain time period. Uh, no, this is the, the Tales 2 trilogy. Okay, so they're like, they did three Tales uh, anthology books, and then they did this one series, uh, which is different time periods, I think, but still more short stories. Okay. Wanderlust, which is a book explaining how... Um, this is another Dragonlance book, obviously, but it explains how Flint, Tanis, and Tasselhoff meet. So that's that's the important part. It's basically just you know showing how this Kender meets everybody else, and annoys them. Yeah, although he he is a funny character as far as that goes. Uh, so anytime you got like Kender in a story, you're you're getting some comedic fantasy out of this. Okay. So Passage to Dawn that is another George Durden book, of course. And Mercedes Lackey Jinx. This is a urban fantasy book. And Mercedes Lackey uh, did various uh, urban fantasy books that were set in like the 1980s, 1990s, and so forth. Uh, this particular one, the main character is riding around with a... She has an Interceptor police car that she's like painted a different color or whatever. And then it's it's basically like... It's more like Harry Potter in some ways, but obviously set in high school. So it's just all this different weird stuff that you wouldn't normally see. But hey, Stephen King apparently liked it. So did he actually read it? I don't know. Maybe he just like read one part of it and then like gave them a quote. Okay, the Cataclysm. So this is another Tales 2 trilogy. So that's a specific point in the timeline. Okay. So there was the Reign of, you know, so the Reign of Istar came first, then the Cataclysm and so forth forth. Okay, here's book two of the Cleric Quintet. It was not in the other box, it's in this box. And there's this elf character who's like, you would think looking at his clothes that he's evil, but he's not. Yeah. That's not a, that's not a, uh, yeah. That's not really a spoiler. It's on the cover. They're just talking. You can see them talking on the cover. Yeah. He just looks evil. Anyway, Land of Minotaurs. I like Minotaurs. Um, now some of you, you may have noticed that Korovia, it sounds like a Russian name. It's not. 
Uh, but uh, the word Korovia in Russian apparently sounds like it means land of cows. So it kind of literally means, like, because there's minotaurs in Korovia, it basically means land of minotaurs. Yeah, in a way. So it's like land of cattle. So that's what Korovia basically means. Um, as far as, like, in Russian, according to various uh, Russian people who have, like, pointed that out to me. Oh, by the way, did you know that Korovia actually basically means land of cows? And I'm like, really? It does have minotaurs, so that works out for me. Also, apparently there is a city in Cyprus named Korovia. So... That's uh, I think so. Land of Mentors. Now, is this an anthology book or is it a? No, nope, this this is a novel by Richard A. Nack. I think I did read this one. I think it's a it's a series of books about. Sorry, it's a it's a book. It's basically about Kaz the Minotaur, who is a character who appears in that other book that I showed you earlier, uh, The Legend of Huma. Um. And we're getting close to the end here. There's only four books left. The Legacy by R.A. Salvatore. So this is another uh, Judge Sturgeon book. There's just a lot of them, I'm afraid. The Halfling's Gem. Believe it or not, it's another Judge Sturgeon book by R.A. Salvatore. This is for the book three of the Icewind Dale trilogy. So this one was actually part of a trilogy. Um... Tells a lovely. It's this one. It these ones are less focused on Dritz himself and more focused on the other characters. So that's a mixture of the, all the characters. A lot of the later books that can't showed up later on, or more about him. Um. So streams of silver. That's book two from the same se series. This one focused more on Brunner and his uh, homeland. And then Sojourn. That is the prequel trilogy to these books. So these books came first. You can kind of tell just looking at them that they're older. And also from my cousin. And then this book also came from my cousin as well, obviously. And is book three of the trilogy that came before. So it's the prequel trilogy. So it's, it's kind of like the author wrote them in the same manner as, say, Star Wars. So you got the original three books that came... Sorry, the original three Star Wars movies... Uh, that came out, and then they did the, the prequel tri trilogy. So in this case, this is the from the prequel trilogy that came later, and then they came out with all the sequel books like this one and so forth, and he just keeps writing them, uh, largely because they think they just give it keep giving him money. Uh, they're like, hey, we'll keep giving you money if you keep writing more of these Dritz Sorden books because obviously he's really popular, and everybody wants to read them apparently. So there's just tons. Of George Sterling books. He, he's just super popular. And yeah. I'm I have a bunch of George Sterling books uh that I need to read sometime. And I just haven't got around to it. These ones, since I've already read them, I don't think I will ever read them again. I will probably sell them because I can't I don't see a point in ever reading them ever again. There are other books like here that I would consider reading over again, or I might even just read parts of them over again. So I would, because I already know how they go, how the story goes, I could just go to one specific part and then only read that part. And like this one, I would be tempted to read this one over again. Yeah, just because I like Minotaurs. All right, so the box is now empty. Uh, we're coming to the end here. Uh, Please like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and go check out my books on Amazon. You can find them at amazon.com backslash author backslash Moffat. Where the hell is my business card when I need it? Okay, one second. There we go. Let's focus that. There you go. You can also go to my website called fiction.charlesmoffat.com. There you go. All right. Uh, have a good day. And... Uh, Happy reading. Bye-bye.